Welcome to the Red V TV preview show supported by A Star Recruitment for the 2022 season. As we look ahead to this weekend's round two Betfred Super League clash against Hull FC at the KCOM Stadium. But it's not called that, is it, Kevin? What's it called these days? Is it the MKM now? It is indeed. Well done. Yeah. Well done indeed. <laughs> um, early kickoff on Saturday. 12.30 uh, in the afternoon. Really looking forward to our, one of our long drives, Kevin, where we can set the world to rights. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing instead, Kevin? <laughs> I'm not going, am I? <laughs> what are you doing instead, Kevin? I've got, I've got long-held plans. What are they, the Kevin? Song. I'm going to the theatre. What are you watching, Kevin? I'm going watching Blood Brothers. This was all planned before the Channel 4 uh, announcement that they were moving our game. And, um, yeah, so I'm going watching that. And I make no apologies for saving 28 quid um, <laughs> and going over to Hull of a Saturday afternoon with the weather, as it could well be, blustery, rainy. Yeah, I've, I make no apologies for going to Manchester instead. You, you probably thought an afternoon matinee on a Saturday was probably the safest time you could pick to not that, miss a that, Saints game. That's why it was booked. That's why it was booked on a Saturday, because Saints don't play on a Saturday, and now we do. And then it's an absolute disgrace that Channel 4 have picked up Super League and they're <laughs> broadcasting the champions to the nation. To be oh. fair, you might still get to see a lot of the game. Yeah, I, I probably will, but it'll be obviously be on, on TV rather than uh, in the flesh. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll see how it goes. And uh, I'll record the Channel 4 coverage as well, just to kind of watch it back and see how they're getting on, because it was a it was a good start from them, uh, I thought, on Saturday. I know this isn't um, Channel 4.net, but it was a good start from them on, on Saturday. I thought they were... They were really good. Obviously, there's little bits that they're going to want to improve on. Um, but a start score, I thought I thought it was a good news story, good, good news story for the, the game. Yeah, um, it was a really entertaining, fair, close game um, on Saturday. Uh, obviously, Warrington just coming away, sneaking the victory. Um, will this weekend be as close, Kevin? Um. I'd hope not. I think all things being equal, um, me, me stock answer would be no here. I mean, you know how, how rugby can go. You get um, one of the, the decisions, like a red card. We've seen quite a few of them over the Super League and, and Championship over the weekend. You get uh, something like that going against you, or even like, I think Leeds were down to 11 at one spell, um, and the pressure can just tell. And if it happens at almost like the wrong time of the game, and there's no set time for when that is, it could be early on and they get a couple of scores on. It could be late on and they nick a try. Listen, we should. I think we should, on paper, beat Hull on Saturday. But, listen, anything can happen, can't it? We used to talk on, on this show about Hull FC being one of those grounds that we always struggle at. We've won our last 11 games against them. We yeah. haven't lost against Hull since 2017, which I was actually quite quite amazed by. It, it just shows how obviously dominant we've been over the last couple of years. But we, we win in Hull, which for a long time wasn't always the case. Yeah, that's it. it, it that's, we've had results over there, like we've nilled them over there in the past and absolutely blitzed them. And then other times we've been over there and, and seemingly just not been at the races. And it has, you know, it, traditionally, it did seem like it was one of those tough places to go, especially since they moved into the KC, KCOM, MKM, whatever the, the, it's been called over the years. Um, but as you say, over the past couple of years, I think it's a shame for the sport that Hull haven't been more um, successful in the league. So I think a, a good Hull team and a, a proper strong Hull team would be great for the league. Um, but yeah, we, we've just had that hex over him. I mean, the, we played him on a Monday night over the last season, didn't we? Um, 
Wellesby got a hat trick over there. It was a great one for the couple of hundred Saints fans who went over there. Um, and it's, it, I don't know, there was there was no worry going over there for that game. I think it was we were in the season, we were going well anyway, but there was no worry going over there. Now, early in the season, yeah, you could throw in a bad performance. You could think that you, you're all that already after uh, beating your you, you runners up in the grand final. Um, last week, but really we should be going over there and thinking, right, we're, we're gonna we're gonna carry on this this professional performance that we put in. Once it, once a game of rugby broke out on on Thursday, we're gonna put in the same performance and we're just gonna beat them at playing rugby. And whatever happens, happens. Yeah, it was a really good performance on that August Monday evening uh, last season. Mad time to play it, nearly as mad as a half twelve on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. Um, 42 points we put on them last time we went over. If we could do the same again, um, it'll, well, it'll be great to, to put on a show for the nation. Um, Saints squad then, Kevin. Um, Joe Batchelor heading it up this week uh, with his photo, obviously. Top of the, the Man of Steel rankings as it currently stands. Um, Christian Wolf naming an unchanged squad um, for this one, obviously. Um, Lewis Dodd, Sio Matautia. Um, Will Hopoati, they're all carrying injuries, but all fit enough at this moment in time to be named in that 21 man squad. Uh, that will go over to Hull, I believe, on Friday afternoon and stay the, stay the night so there's no early start for them. I think that makes sense, doesn't it? Um, uh, yeah, Percy passed his uh, HIA as well, didn't he? Um, on Thursday, so. that's a really good one as well, Kevin, because um, I don't know whether you're aware the, the rule change that's gone ahead this season. Whereas in previous years it was only seven days, so or you you could get yourself back potentially for the following week, depending on depending on where the the fixtures lay. This year it's eleven days, so if yeah. you go off and you, and you fail that head test, you are pretty much guaranteed to miss the following week. Yeah, which that's a uh, listen. There's a there's a debate. There's probably a Red V TV special where you debate the. Uh, how you deal with head injuries and how you deal with with kind of high tackles and things like that. Uh, you've got to look after the players. <coughs> I think with with all the legal action that has been threatened or is going ahead, I think you've got to look after the players, and that's a, a perfect way to to start all that. As you say, Percy passing his his HIA is great for us because it means that he, he can just come into the squad, like just stay in the squad this week. Um, and we don't have to to kind of go through the protocols. And not only that, it's good for Percy that, listen, the head knock that he took, he was adamant he didn't want to go off on Thursday. Um, he was down in front of the West, wasn't he? And he was, he was adamant he didn't want to go off, but the, the medical team did exactly the right thing by going and getting him checked out. Yeah, and I think Christian Wolf was saying afterwards that if um, he needed to, and the game had been a bit more in the balance a bit earlier, he could have actually probably gone back onto the field. Um, yeah. But, yeah, head injuries, especially with the knowledge that we've got now, um, I'm glad to see that the club aren't willing to to take any risks with pl- uh, any players. And and you know what? If he wasn't fully recovered this week, you've got players in the squad, the likes of Ben Davis, Josh Sim, um, who would be able to come in and, and fill in. But hopefully it looks like touch wood that Tommy, uh, Mark Percival will be able to take his place in the lineup. Um, Obviously, Sione and... Will Hopwati, they sat out earlier in the week, Christian Wolf was saying, but we're both able to take um, part in training on Thursday. Um, but if one of them is to miss out, then obviously there's, there's players who come, can come in. Um, if it was Will Hopwati, wh- wh- where do you see that going? Obviously, you've got Conrad Harrell. Do, do you move him into centre, potentially play the likes of Josh Sim out on the wing? Yeah, I think I think it would be straight swap. Uh, Will Hopwati started uh, on the wing against Catalan, didn't he? Um, I could just see it being a straight swap. I think we've spoken in the past about uh, Ben Davis potentially being half a step ahead of Josh Sim in the reckoning with him starting the um, Alex Wormsley testimonial game. Um, but is that at centre, Kev? Yeah, that's at centre. I think Josh Sim is a, is a little bit a little bit more able to to kind of go out and play on that on that wing or on either wing. I think he's done it for us before as well. Um, If Will Hopoati ends up missing out, I've got no problem with Josh Sim going on there. I think, listen, he's played Super League before. He knows what it's about. He's played out on the wing. 
he'll be fine over the. He will be fine over the. Um, I think obviously if you're watching this after Friday evening, and if the wind has stayed away and the reserves have played, um, this squad and and the team and the 18 probably the 18 man squad will probably become a little bit more apparent. And um, there may be a couple of those names who actually take part in the reserve game on Friday evening potentially. Um, and I think that might give the game away a little bit, depending on, and you'll see who's fit and who's not, obviously, with the option of, of players dropping down to, to get a bit of rugby under the belts. Um, but at this point, filming this on Thursday, um, Ruskin might be covered in, well, trees. Well, it, is covered, yeah. it is covered in trees, but the trees might have fell over by this time tomorrow. Yeah, that's it. It, it. it might be, it might just be one or two kind of drop down into it, and we, we take, instead of taking. Your twenty-one man squad over there, we do take nineteen and just two drop out. As you say, it might might shape who the match day um seventeen will be. I think obviously Christian will set it in the press. He, he's looking at, at naming the same seventeen. Um would it surprise me if the, there's kind of one or two changes? Absolutely not. Is there any point risking someone who's kind of 50-50 for making it in round two? Not really, not when we've got the, the depth of the squad, as you say. Sioni drops out, you've got the option of, of bringing Kyler Moore onto the bench or Jay Wingfield onto the bench. If Will Hopoati misses out, you can just slot Josh Sim straight onto that wing, can't you? Yeah, really good, really good to have those options. And yeah. if you cast Park the Ruskin, this was your warning that you should have moved it. Yeah. <laughs> um. The Hull FC squad, Kevin, um, obviously they got off to a good start uh, last weekend with the victory o- over Wakefield. Um, they'll be looking to, to make a bit of an impression this year. Have they spelt their number 26's surname wrong? <laughs> well, they just noticed that because I've not got my reading glasses on, so I can't I can actually read it, but I thought the number eight was just called SAD. And I thought they'd spelt that wrong for a minute. And that's just my eyes not being able to, to read Sal properly then. Yeah. Um, that's It's a bit of a shocker, that, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the, it's like the time to play Wordle. Yeah, <laughs> fit it in and see if there's an R in there. The best part is that they've spelt Mitielli Bulliki GP Japani. Bulliki Japani, I'm right? I'm glad you said that. <laughs> it's Mitielli Bulliki Japani. They've spelt that correctly. But I managed to spell Walker wrong underneath. Brilliant. <laughs> Just Excellent doesn't have to word. scrabble letters. Um, yeah. yeah, this whole FC squad um, got a win last weekend. Will it take a little bit of time for them to, to blend? They've obviously got Darnell McIntosh, Luke Gale, Joe Lovadier, or Lovadier, uh, making the debuts, all three scored um, at Wakefield last week. Um, but Changes obviously Jake Connor got sent off and he's received a ban, as you were saying a little bit earlier about headshots. He's yeah. copped one for that. Uh, Andre Savelio's got a two match ban, and Carlos Tumabarbi, who's always dangerous against us, misses out with a tight hamstring. Yeah, and I think there are three big misses as well for them. Um, I mean, it, it potentially gives the, the chance to Jamie Shaw, who's been, I think he's been linked with Toulouse, um, the chance to show why he should be in there. Um, in the seventeen, and why he should should be should be kept around the, the place. Um, if, as I say with Hull, it's they've got some good players. They always tend to have some good players. There's just something about, and I, I don't know what exactly it is. I can't put my finger on it because if I could, I'd be their coach and I'd be leading them to grand final glory. But there's just something up there that that. They just can't quite gel, can they? They can't quite put performances together. And it's been a it's been a case under a couple of different coaches with different sets of players. And for some reason, they just cannot kind of put together uh, those performances where you think these are a real danger this year. They may well go and prove me wrong here on, on Saturday, but there's just, I don't know, there's just something that you think, come on. Just find that missing piece of that jigsaw. I find, I think they've, they've made a good step. I know he's not playing on Saturday, but putting Jake Connor in one position, your fullback, that's it. 
we're not going to start playing you in the centre, we're not going to play you six, we're not going to start mucking you about and play. That's your position, right? Now we can set up from the whether he's the right choice at fullback. Obviously, I don't watch whole week in, week out. Whether they could have somebody better in there, I don't know. But he's a great, great player. Um, and to build your team, you've got to start building your team around that type of player, whether he should be playing at six instead or seven or one, whatever. But there's just something, I don't know, and I can never put my finger on what it is, but there's just something not quite gelling about, about Hull as a team. Yeah. Uh, Scott Walk, uh, Scott Taylor, another big miss as well. I haven't even mentioned him. He, he normally leads from the front. Yeah. Um, you just get the feeling that Saints are going to have far too much um, for this whole side and, and it it could get away from them early if Saints turn up in the, it, with the with the fire in the belly that they showed against the Catalans last week yeah that's it if we, if we play to that same level um, and and as you say just just keep it calm control the aggression I think is the, the phrase that we um, that was right for to, to kind of sum up that Catalan game but that's it. We get a couple of scores in front and start controlling that game. It will be tough for them to get back into it. Um, as I say, they've got great, they've got great forwards in Sow and Satai, though, with Horton who can kind of steer them around a pitch. Luke Gale's been there, done it. I don't know. I just don't know what's what's kind of what they need to kind of get them into a proper like the challenging the top three. You've got a nice kit though this year, Kev. They have, yeah. Um, yeah. The Kiwi, like. Yeah, that's it. Swap that to white and red, and that's a, a very good it's like thing. It's like the Saint shirt of uh, what, 1989 ish. Mm. Um, Saints uh, will take a massive travelling support over. Um, there's 900 tickets been sold already from the club. Obviously, there'll be a number of fans who will be travelling over by car, paying on the gate. So it should be at least 1,000 Saints fans over there, which. But you know what? A game where the charge was 28 quid to get in. Um, it's on national television early on a Saturday afternoon. Do you know what? Fair play. Um, Saints fans getting out in the numbers and, and it should be a really good travelling support. And we have to mention home bargains who have subsidised the, the price of the coaches as well to allow 250 Saints fans to travel up there for a fiver, which is fair play. Putting the money behind the club and behind the fans. Yeah, excellent work from Home Bargains. Listen, we, we mentioned the fans in the instant fan reaction um, after the game on Thursday. They're tremendous. They were tremendous on Thursday night. The 900 tickets that have been sold, and as you say, there'll probably be some walk-ups. Make sure, make sure you take cash for your tickets and a card for in the ground, because I'm sure that they were turning around. And last year, they were only taking cash payments for the tickets and the ticket office. So just take both. And make sure you take over 30 quid for an adult ticket as well. But um, yeah, the, the, the fans are the fans are doing us proud and rightly so. Listen, we've we've won the league three times in a row. You go and see one of arguably the best Saints team you're gonna see. Um definitely one of the best Saints teams that I've seen. So good on the fans for, for getting behind them and actually going and not go watching a matinee performance of Blood Brothers like I am instead. <laughs> Have you seen Blood Brothers before, though, Kev? I have. It's brilliant. It's my favourite thing to watch on the field. There you go. Right. Um, and the Saints fans who are travelling up, I'm sure, will show their respects um, for a Hull FC legend, Johnny Whiteley, MBE, who passed away this week at the age of 91. Um, a legend up in the city of Hull. Um, coached both clubs. Um, was part of Chess wins over Australia, won the World Cup won the Challenge Cup um, with Hull, well, at least played in it. Um, absolute legend of the sport up there, and it's always sad uh, when you lose one of your own. Um, so I'm sure Hull FC will be memorising, having a memorial for his life and his passing, and I'm sure all Saints fans will uh, show the respect also. Yeah, absolutely. That's it, as you say. True legend of the sport. Um and um, that's it. I'm sure Saints fans will get behind uh, whatever Hull are doing uh, before the game to remember him. Also founded the West Hull Amateur Club as well, which is probably um, 
brought through more than its fair share of, of professionals as well. It's yeah, pretty much a man who's probably dedicated his life to the sport and yeah. the community of Hull. So yeah, um, fair play, and hopefully he'll get the recognition that he deserves, which I'm sure he will. Uh, yeah, and it'll probably definitely. fit in that he gets it on national TV as well, Kev. Yeah, yeah, definitely so. That's it. It's uh, listen. It's uh, it was sad to hear of his passing, uh, but that more people will be able to to pay their respects, whether as you say, it's in front of the television or at the game, they'll be able to pay their respects and and kind of hopefully Channel Four uh, make sure they stay with it and 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 kind of nod towards um, like the minute silence. I'd imagine that that'll happen beforehand. Uh, but you're right. Uh, a fellow who has dedicated his life to the sport and West Hull, famous club, famous amateur club. Um, yeah, and that's it. I'm sure Saints fans will get behind um, whatever Hull do. What's with the Danny Hill shirt, Kev? Nice, isn't it? It's a prop. Very lovely. Um, yeah. Danny Hill, sponsored by Red V. Dot net for the 2022 season. And there's a nice little sponsor on the bottom of that jersey as well, Kev, which you're hiding behind yeah. your shoulder all yeah, but I've I've got that I've got the same one here. All right, but yeah, there we go. The A star recruitment. Sorry, I'm I'm quite I'm quite fat, so that's why it's hiding behind me. <laughs> Get yourself moving, dancing in the aisles for Blood Brothers, and uh, we may see that side next week. Yeah, or just have a couple of beers while watching it instead. Right, uh, prediction score prediction, Kev. Um, I've been quite conservative in saying six by fourteen. I'm going to be quite conservative and say Saints by 24. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And I will join you for an instant fan reaction following the game at the MKM Stadium with a mystery guest for the fan reaction. It's whoever you can get hold of, isn't it? It is, because I don't know who I'm getting <laughs> at the minute. <laughs> don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Catch you soon.